right, and we're off and running. And how are you doing today, Teddy? I'm fine. How are you? I am doing good. And I'm going to rehash what I said before at the beginning of this test where I had a fanciful feast of a veggie burrito and tuna fish and I wanted pizza. But I said no because I've been trifling. I feel like there's a camera in the parking lot because Pete, um, Domino's is in the same damn lot as the gym. Like you sons of my bubba bitches. What does it have to do with eating pizza? You really ain't supposed to be coming out the gym and going to the chicken spot or the pizza spot. That's not really, you know. Why not? Says who? <laughs> no, seriously, says who? Says people that are in shape. All right, there yeah, we go. Okay. Let there be light. Ha, 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 ha. So, Nana Do, what are we talking about today? I'm going to let you come up with the topic because you always look to me to come up with the topic and I'm throwing it back to you. No, I don't always think of the topic. I, I mean, I don't always put it I on you. I know you don't. Yes, no, you do. Uh, Listen, just shoot. Uh, what's on my mind? Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. I don't know, Nana. Um, I didn't really, let's see, what the, I, I did listen to the news this morning. Um, did you hear about the six year old? Did you read anything about that? That shot his teacher on purpose. And um, you told Virginia? me about that the other day, so what's the follow up? I don't know. I, I mean, I haven't. They said that, that he was in custody, and I thought that was odd because I'm like, custody where? Because he's too young for jail and he's too young for yeah. juvenile detention. So, yeah, where is he in custody at home? Custody is not really the the right word. Um, well, that's what the news said. I can only repeat what they said. Um, I'm sorry. I should have did that at the beginning before we started recording. That's just so. I, um, that's like a uh, a, a sharp um, transient, so I could sync the audio easier. Mm -hmm. So make that loud noise like that, so I can see the transient. And sink. So yeah, custody is the wrong word to use um, because you, like I said, you don't put a child that young in custody. You pretty much, I don't know what you call it, but you know, like I said, he's too young to do anything with. And the only thing that could happen to him is if parents are like, you know, if they take the kids, if the state takes the kid away, or if the parents give the kid up, make them a ward of the state. Other than that, ain't nothing happening to that kid. Therapy and stuff like that, but. Yo, know, they were saying how um, it was crazy, but they were praising the teacher. The you know, teacher put his hand, put his or her hand up, got shot through the hand in the chest, and still got the other kids to safety. Was still trying to take care of the other. Kids. I'm like, wow, wow. I'm like, yeah. You know, you don't want to. You, you really don't want to throw a life away so early. But I'm like, yo, they're, they're entirely too hush on this and I was like yo there's so much that needs to be investigated the parents and the kid this kid wasn't a happy child yesterday just you know doing normal things and then shot his teacher today there's something seriously wrong in that house well I mean I guess so I, I think <laughs> I think part of the um the quietness or the sense of the hush is that you know he's a minor you know, so there's only so much they can divulge. And, you know, one of the sheriffs was like, you know, this was an intentional shooting. And, and you just got to figure out how, you know, what, like you said, when did this kid get to, you know, what, I'm going to shoot this bitch if she, if she say, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit down and I have, or, you know, or whatever it is, I, I want the orange crayon. I mean, whatever it is that six year olds and do it are doing and, you know, kindergarten or first grade. Yeah. Um, so that's part of the, definitely the reason for the hush. Mm. And even even though it's a kid, I mean, I understand, you know, they treat children with kids gloves as they should because there's something wrong and we're not, even though our instinct is like, we feel like we want people to fry for this and, you know, oh my God, this is a monster and training all that, but this is a child and we have to try to save this child as best we can to redeem well, them. You know, I mean. I don't, yeah. Yeah, I I don't personally um, I don't personally share that belief. 
<laughs> I mean, I just think so. That. You know, say so. If it, so, what, what's the, what's the alternative? A child does something that heinous. Do we try to save them, or we just do, or do okay? Do we in fact just throw him in jail, and throw away the key, and let him just like become a bigger monster in jail, and hope that he has a Malcolm Malcolm X moment, a Malcolm Little well, moment? Well, first of all, he can't go to jail. That's that's not even an option. So that shouldn't be on the table because it's not realistic. Um, and when you say try to save him, I mean that's an open-ended question because what are we trying to save him from? Becoming a because monster. We don't want him to think that, okay, he did it and pretty much nothing that would happen to an adult is going to happen to him and I'm sure his little life is not easy across the board, especially now with all the eyes and people coming at him and stuff like that. So how do we prevent this kid from getting worse, you know, and growing up to be some 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 maniac? Is that our responsibility, or that's his parent, or is that his parents' responsibility? At this point, it's the society's responsibility. At this point, it's the village' responsibility at this time because the parents obviously are in over their head, or they're the catalyst for all of this. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I, honestly, I I just don't know if I feel like um, it's the village's responsibility. When shit goes sideways, I think it is. I mean, I be. I mean, they say it takes a village to raise a child, and that's an old school, you know, trope. You know, which is like today, you really put pretty much mind your business when you see kids doing stuff because they so wild today. You know, and they don't respect their elders, and you be done got to some shit, and then you're gonna be in a situation where I'm gonna have to kill this little motherfucker, or you know, uh, or let him have his way with it because he's a kid, and, and you know. <laughs> We don't get down like that, so it's just best to like you know what I'm a mama business. So right. the, the village raising a child thing is really not something that we you know get down with in today's times. But in a situation like this where something horrible has happened and now we have this child in custody, and uh, so what do we do? How do we prevent this child from getting worse? We can't leave it up to parents to figure it out. I mean, obviously this family needs help. Okay. I mean, I, I, I'm I just telling you where I stand. I don't know. Yeah. I have to know more hold, hold on. what's going on. Hold on, on a second. Yeah. Are you talking about the, the, the big TV? With the fedora on? Yeah. The tooth dangling and shit? The little My McKenna. tooth ain't dangling. That tooth fell out. Oh, it fell out? I don't think that. Yeah. Damn. I was going to say you look good. Up, you Teddy said, what's up? Oh, how you doing, Teddy? That's not what I said. She said, what's up, Bo? Mm, you know the vibes. I was going to say you look good, but... I mean, you do, you do, you do, but... You we're, we're, actually, we're actually figuring out the podcast thing right now. This is a test run. Nice. You and Teddy about the podcast? Yeah. Well, y'all eat that shit up. Because you and Teddy have some bubbly-ass personalities. She's more energetic than you are, because you're yeah. sort of like a fucking sloth. But she's like, you know... I mean, it's not a bad thing. Wow, sloth is not a bad thing. Wow. It's not a bad thing. It's a personality quirk. Oh, shit, you believe this shit? <laughs> this y'all would eat that shit up, though. It is Dante. What? A sloth? Oh, my sweet baby. It, it, it is the, the bearded, the bearded bonnet sweet king. Sweet baby. Sweet baby, my ass. Yeah, you know the vibes. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and lick your germ fingers a bit on your keyboard. You want to touch him? I'm going to touch your head. Oh, you know, stop it. I'm going to scratch my balls and touch your beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you go, you go, <laughs> and, I, and I'm going to kick your ass down a flight of steps. Oh, my God. I almost beat on myself. <laughs> oh, my Lord. He, he would have to go into the witness protection program and say a lot of things. Yeah. Shit. Fucking Scratch your balls and touch my face. You better fucking run. Get in your car and head for the hills. Bullshitting. Mm. Ah. So, uh, what else, man? Um, let's see. You were talking about this thing with the, uh, with the baby, and I'm just ah. saying, I feel like I don't, I don't know if I feel like this is something that here we go. This is something that I feel like we need to take on. As a society? As a society. Okay, so what do you think should happen? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just, t- and, that's, and that's the point I'm making. 
you know, I, I don't know if I feel like this is something that the society should take on. I mean, listen, people have kids. I mean, it's a responsibility. You need to be, I mean, just like, you know, it's crazy. They were paying people to get their kids to the doctor and all this nonsense and tomfoolery. And I just feel like, yo, um, if you're a parent, you know, do your parenting job. I mean, no, it's not easy. No, it's, there are things that we don't want to do and blah, 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 blah. So now I, we got to step in and, and take care of your kids. Well, people need help in society. It's not easy for all of us. I mean, people like me and you, yeah, we're used to doing everything by ourselves. But at the same time... Hold on a second. What's that? And what? How do you know that? Okay, but she still has bills to pay. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. Hmm. That was grandma business. Yeah, so that hmm? was grandma business. So um yes. yeah, I just I just don't know. I, I think society takes on too much as it is. And I think that if they if they're gonna start taking on stuff, they really need to just like <laughs> they really need to like where's the accountability for the parents? And for them to say that you know they won't be able to in the hands of the doctor. Oh, that they won't be able to like hold the parents accountable is just I can't. Then you don't. I mean, that's the thing. It's a tricky situation. I mean, I know it's happened before, it's, it's only, but you know what? It's only as tricky as we make it. That's the problem. It's just like you have all these degrees of murder. If you killed me and I'm dead, you killed me and I'm still dead. No, but we got to look at, did you mean to kill me? You know, had you planned it or were you just, you know, did you just out of rage kill me? What difference does it make? I'm still dead. Was it an accident? Accidents are separate. But I mean, there's just too many degrees of criminality and and. And things are really overcomplicated for no reason. Why is it a tricky situation? Did this get the did this baby get the gun from his house? Did the gun does the gun belong to one of the adults in the house? Then whosoever gun it is is responsible because you didn't secure it so that he couldn't get it. That to me is like a no brainer. Why is that complicated? It shouldn't be complicated. It should be clear cut. I mean, you know, there's there's laws and there's rules and there's regulations, especially when it comes to guns. And one of the main things is um, secure your weapon. You know, weapon a weapon should not be accessible by a six year old to just take to school. Nobody knows what the hell's going on, and whatever's in this little person's mind, you know, they commit a heinous crime. I mean, I'm with you on that one. That goes that to me. That's squarely in a parent's shoulders because I now, I don't own guns. All my neighbors own guns. Um, but you know, um, what I do know about guns, if I was to have one in my house, and I had especially little children, because my older children, um, they would probably. I mean, I would imagine um, if it was really a matter of like home security and stuff like that, they would have access to my guns. Like I think most households are when you have adult children. The adult children do have like you know general access to the weaponry um but if you have little kids yo a kid should not be able to just pick up a gun and the gun disappears and nobody knows i mean to me it's just like if you had a car and your car was in the driveway and the shit just disappeared and your kid disappeared wouldn't you notice i mean how do you not how do you not notice your gun is gone when you got little kids in the house, you know, and you're not securing it? Like, I, I, I don't think a gun is something where, let's say, for example, you're you're sitting at the dining room table and you're cleaning your weapons, right? Somebody comes to the door and it's like, oh, let me go answer the door and shit like that. And you walk away and leave your kids sitting there with your guns, which are not disassembled. There's like a, 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 a full gun with bullets sitting right there on the table and you walk away. 
I think that's the type of responsibility where you don't walk away from something like that. It's like, look, before you go to take care of B and C, you secure A. That's the, that's how serious I believe the responsibility of having a gun is around little children. You know, you can't turn your back on that and just assume they're not going to do something stupid with it. I mean, that's like leaving matches yeah. where kids can be, right? When you, when, when, what do we do when we childproof our homes, right? There's certain things that instinctively parents know their children are going to get into. So we purposely childproof it because we know things as simple as um, opening cabinets. You know, people will, will, will strap their cabinets because you don't want the little kids to go underneath the cabinet and think that... Uh, say like the uh lemon lemon ammonia is lemonade and start drinking it right or um you don't leave matches where kids can reach them because you tell them no 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 you know don't don't use matches but um hey a, a kid's mind you know sometimes i mean hell I, i'm fascinated by fire as an adult you know so little children get fascinated by fire you know and you know and shit happens it doesn't matter if you told them but you left a box of matches where this kid could reach them and he set your house on fire. Whose fault is that? Is the kid's fault? No. Nah, well, it's your fault. Depends on how old the kid is. You know what I'm talking about. We're talking about little kids. Little kids, kids. Little yeah. kids who, okay. their little minds and they process things differently. And when we, even when we tell them there's danger afoot, they, don't, they can't comprehend the level of danger. It just sounds like words to them. It's it's kind of like when you if your if your parent tells you don't touch that because it's hot and you won't listen. So I know most black fans like I'll let you touch it one time just so you fucking understand this shit. And you be like hot 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 like yeah now you know don't touch that shit again. Mm, I mean, listen, uh, yeah. So I mean, so that's where I am. Like you know, with the like, society just overcomplicates things. It's not complicated. Whatever gun it was, they need to be held responsible. Now, what what does that accountability look like? Does it look like jail time? I mean, had the woman died, most definitely. Right. Um, I would say yes, but you know, she didn't die. She he he. It just traumatized her and every other kid and parent in the school because, like the one parent said, you know, she never thought that she would be sharing about an experience of a shooting at her child's school and not knowing whether or not her child was shot. Yeah. Um, have you, ever, have you ever had to deal with that? Have like, has there ever in Raina school, has there ever been like a, shootings or someone came to school with a gun or something like that when your child was in school? The, yes. Um, but see, New York City schools are different <laughs> because first of all, you got to get past the two good toten heifers um, for our school. We had the greatest uh, school safety and they were packing um, because they were police officers sitting at the mm. front desk, okay? So you were gonna have to get through them right. first. Um, so what actually happened was there, there was a shooting outside of the school, probably like a block or two away but the suspects were running towards right. the school. So they locked the school down. I mean, they closed the little, the, the thing, you know, like the grate or whatever um, for the doors. They shut it down. Right. Right. Um, and they shut it down. And then, you know, there was a thing that went out. So of course, you are, you know, your phone rings and you look at it and you see it's the school and it's an automated blah, blah, blah. The school has been shut right. down, blah, 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 blah. So you're sitting there like, okay, you can't get in touch with the school because now everybody's right. calling and all the kids are in hiding. You know, they did the whole, you know, get under your desk mm -hmm. thing. And I'm like, yeah. okay, so, you know, I, I, mean, I wasn't really nervous. I think I was, I guess I was kind of nervous, but I, like I said, I knew that they had to get past Miss Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't really think they were going to get past her. Right. Um, because she, she always talks about how she had to get home to her kids. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I really didn't think they were going to get past her in that sense. But I mean, it is something you think about, especially in high school. Um, oddly enough, in our high school, we didn't have security. Our security guard, we had security. We had mall cop security. They didn't have guns. Um, and that's why 
when a, a gang of kids came into the high school to, to fight some kids that went to the high school, they had to call uh, 77th Precinct. So, I mean, things happen, but in New York, it, it's a lot different because they're, you know, generally in traditional public schools, there are armed police officers sitting at the... Oh, you can. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, you're, you're going to have a fight. And it's not to say that, it's not the reality of it is, it's not to say that nobody can get past them, but you're not going to just get an E. That, that you're not going to do. You're not just going to roll up in there. If you want to get up in there, you fought to get up there. And probably took some heat before you, you might have got a buckshot in your <laughs> yeah, boo before you climbed yeah, up the it. stairs. Aside from the fact that I used to always make fun because uh, Raina's class or our school was actually just on the fourth floor. And I'm like, anybody coming up here to kill these kids gonna get tired before they get to the, before they get up here. <laughs> <laughs> that's they gonna that's have the to secret. Rest. We can't have ground level schools. We we have to have class. We have to start building schools that are like fifteen stories tall. We put all the schools on the fifteenth floor. So anybody that want to come up in there, they got to do a hella walking, and then hell and running away. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the answer? And if you get to look, and if you get to that fifteenth floor, <laughs> then you really want whoever you ask because. I'm giving up after this. Yeah, I feel like this some bullshit. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> right, right. It is, but like in a not funny kind of way. But I mean, I mean, you know what? I think, um, you know, we're laughing about it, but the way this world is and the way schools are typically designed, um, you know, I, I think we have this thing about schools need to be this kind of open kind of thing and you know to it to not make kids feel a kind of ways and stuff like that but when we when we continue to have schools set up in the traditional way that schools have always set up the new age of psycho out here it's making it too easy for them listen we always had security guards in brooklyn in new york, in, you know, in new york and they didn't always have guns. Honestly, that's that. I don't know when that when yeah. school safety became part of the uh, part of mm -hmm. NYPD. Um, but you know, I think because and and I will say this, and it may not sound you know uh, p uh, politically correct or yeah. PC. You know, I, New York has to deal with the realities of violence a lot more than um you know the suburbs new york you know the five boroughs right. new york city as opposed to the suburbs and these small cities um you know in these little places so you know our kids already unfortunately are like accustomed to dealing with violence so they get the whole why miss rodriguez is sitting here um at the door with a gun there's a way to do that in um, in schools that aren't used to the violence, um, and it, and it needs to be done for GP too. Not just like every, oh, this is a good community and that'll never happen here. You got to stop because that shit happened up, and I live in the mountains, as you know. And uh, if you remember a couple of years ago, there was some guy that um, that that. Um, um, I don't know if he killed the, the state trooper, but he was shooting state troopers and he was hiding mm -hmm. in the woods. Yo, this guy used to sit behind my son in high school, okay? And he's like, yo, that dude used to sit behind me in high school. And now they found him a couple of miles away from my house. And he made his way, we'll say, let's say he made his way from the north. And I would say came down southeast to where I'm at. And he literally got found a couple of miles from my house. And the way he was making his way, he could have been possibly making his way. Now, granted, he wasn't breaking in people's houses and things like that. He was just, he was a survivalist. He was hanging out in the woods. But um, at the same time, um, heading close to home that my sons knew this guy. And he did what he did. Um, now that wasn't a school shooting that was you know a public thing but my, my point is that it doesn't matter how safe you think you are 
You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it doesn't matter. You live in a community and, you know, the police, the sirens. Like, I never hear police sirens going, you know, going off. Uh, even ambulances. When ambulances travel, they, they don't even put their, their, the sound on. They just put the lights on. You know, that's how quiet it is. Um, um, but it's not to say that things can't happen. Oh, and, and, and my kids' high school, which bugged me out when I found out, just reading through this, they have a rifle club at the high school. Got the picture, like 15 kids lined up with their rifles and the teachers shoot the kid, teach the kids how to shoot and they shoot competitively and stuff like that. So, you know, when they t- talk about this debate about school safety and guns and stuff like that, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, the... the urban condition is a little bit different but it doesn't stop anybody from going ape shit in a quote unquote safe neighborhood you know i mean every school district across the country needs to take precautions i mean i personally like the idea of a rifle club i I don't know that it would do well um in the city you don't think Um, that'd go well in brooklyn <laughs> the Gat Club, the Gat Listen, Club. I wouldn't trust it. <laughs> the Biscuit Club. Listen, I would not have trusted. I would not have trusted anybody in Raina's school, let alone Raina with a oh. rifle. No, ma'am. No, no, sir. No, ma'am. Like, yo, you man, you gonna get part of the Glizzy Club? <laughs> um, but but I agree. I mean, I think that as I said to you before. You know, when we talk about gun control, they're, they're controlling the wrong aspect of guns. To say that people shouldn't have guns or shouldn't own guns is not the way to go. If you are, I do think that there should be requirements, as we've talked about often. Like, you, you know, you have to have a license to drive a car. Um, a car can be a lethal weapon if, you know, you run people over on purpose or you hit them. So you need to have a license to have a gun. You need to take a test. You need to pass it. You need to recertify every so often. And and that's where the control comes in. If your gun was stolen, when was it stolen? Did you report it stolen? If your gun that was stolen that you didn't report was used in the commission of a crime, there's some liability on that for you because you should have reported it before then. You know? So it's just about accountability. But I think that you know, if you, you do the work and you do the due diligence and you want to own guns, you just yeah. need to be responsible for them. So when you have guns in a home with kids, you need to, you know, be responsible. You need to put it in a place where kids can't get to it or, or they don't have access to it or they don't know where it is. I mean, but that's kind of hard. I mean, kids can get access to things you would be surprised. When Raina was little, she used to. I had these glass apples from Greece by this artist that's uh, probably dead. And I had like 10 apples and I put them up high and she broke every one, every single solitary apple. She broke it. And she wasn't even, she was barely crawling. How do you just, she was climbing. That's why I started calling her monkey. She would she would let her feet grab the netting on the playpen. Yeah. You know how the, the playpen I, I, She used she, her I mean, feet to grab yo, the netting. Like her feet. <laughs> yo, like a monkey. Like you were just grabbing it and climbing up. Like, That's funny. Oh. So, you know, kids, kids can find things. You you know, you might not think that they can find, but they find things, right? Okay, fine. So you need to put a lock on it. There needs to be a a, 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 a code, or a, you know, not just a key. You need to, I mean, if you had, hopefully, if you had like a, a snake for a pet, you would lock it up and lock, not let your kids have access to it. You know, you need to do the same due right. diligence. Although there was really a horrible story of this family that had a pet mm. constrictor and it got out of the crib and the kid was in the crib. The kid was sleeping mm. with his parents and the snake got in the bed. And With the parents did? No one felt that? Listen, I always question that. I don't know what happened. All I know is 
you know, maybe the kid was at the right. foot of the bed. You know, maybe he came in the parents' room afterwards. He laying on the foot of the bed, and the snake just, I mean, died. So, I mean, that, <laughs> oopsie. I mean, I, that was horrible. Yeah. You know, there needs to be accountability. <sighs> there needs to be. Um, I don't. I everything can't why. just be an accident when something horrible happens, and it was something that you could have secured or something you could have prevented, but because you want to do things in a shortcut irresponsible or bizarre way like you know okay yeah you want to bowl a strip there in your house and you don't secure the cage like oh he's never going to crawl out the cage and possibly harm our child like you know no you know a boa constrictor is not a, a pit bull you can't train a boa all you could do with a boa is have it around humans where it's used to being around humans and you keep it fed so it won't attack you and stuff like that i mean it's an animal like any other where snakes typically are not uh, aggressive towards people they actually back away from people unless they're like threatened or they're hunting you know so you know mm -hmm. the, the fact that that kid that Kaboa did that to that kid oh, oh God, we don't want to have a conversation about a damn ball restrictor they probably wasn't feeding the damn snake because the snake was fed the snake would have no need to kill the baby well and the crazy thing is I don't know the, he didn't eat the baby he just killed him right okay well yeah I mean, yeah, right. That's so, an interesting story. I'd be interested um, to know if in that story, did the boa like, kill the baby and then slither off and they woke up and I was like, oh my God, or was it like, you know, um, the fact that they didn't, they didn't, well, if you feel the baby, you won't necessarily do anything because, I mean, I've done that when my kids are babies and if they would sneak into the bed and if I didn't feel like kicking them out the bed, I just let them stay. I feel them wiggling around and stuff like that, but I don't bother with them. I just leave them where they're at, you know, and, and now I'm conscious because I'm like, I don't need my big ass to roll over and smother my children. Parents who sleep with their children know what that feels like, too. You oh, got yeah. that awareness where now you can't sleep sleep because if you want to roll around like you normally do, you could hurt your kid. So now you that awareness kicks in. Yeah. Well, I could say Raina slept with me and never, I mean, from a baby baby. Well, she would sleep with me when we would visit my mom. And we slept in my mom's bed and I never, well, I'm not a tosser and turner. So that wasn't, you know, I, well, I, you know, I just lay in one spot. You. I be, um, like, I'm like an alligator in hmm? the swamp, man. I'm like the death roll. I'm sleeping like, oh. <laughs> You don't really? think so? You don't I'm really do that. I mean, uh, no, I mean, I don't know unless I'm just sleeping so hard. I don't. I don't. Really I, I feel like I sleep. I mean, I toss and turn when I sleep in my bed, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's because if I'm sleeping with someone, I am more conscious that somebody else is there, and I just the, the good dude that I am. Like, yeah, I ain't gonna just kick her in the pussy or nothing like that. So, yeah, you know, yeah. Really? Yeah, that was so crass. It was. Um, I don't think that, um, either way, yeah, you know, due diligence is called for, is yeah. what is called for. What's good? But somebody needs to be held accountable, I'm sorry. And, and no, we can't put a six-year-old in jail. Um, you know, we don't have a group home. We don't have group home. Oh, this is interesting. We don't have group homes. You know, for six years. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you can take you know, but somebody, somebody needs to be right. Sorry. All right, let's talk about one more thing, and then we'll wrap this up. Oh, okay, we're done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, we're at thirty-three okay. minutes already, so. Okay. Well, have at it. I can't look. I came up with it. I did 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 it. Your oh, turn, that your topic? Um, okay. Um. Yeah, oh, it wasn't yours. Mm. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Don't make Boy. me face my right here. Mm. You are not the boss. You are not the boss of me. No, like, no, you're not. Not today. Oh, you, lost oh, that you screwed face me early because you thought I was ignoring you. So now you wanna, you you wanna. You was ignoring me, and I was I was trying to have. A I was distracted. There's a difference between being distracted and ignoring you. That's all. 
I still wanted to know, but you wanted to get all <laughs> screw face on me and be like, no, no, it's okay. I don't need to talk about you. you. No. Yeah, so, okay. You did. All right, well, sure, it's yeah. going to have to be. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. I care. I honestly wanted to know, but if you don't want to tell me, I go, all right. You didn't no, you didn't. It. Because if you wanted to, you would have. Regardless, if you was salty, that I didn't give you my full undivided attention at that moment. But then once I gave it back to you, you was like with your arms folded. You didn't. Yeah, with my what? Oh, because yeah. I was going to say. Psst. My arms were not. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, they did. In the ether? In and the you're ether? A, yeah, and they you're did. A blue head. You know, Whatever. Shoot, you forget who you talk. You forget who you talking to. Aww. Kick rocks. Kick, ro kick rocks. I forget who I'm talking to. You know what? Now you forget who you're talking to. Just because I play my position and I step back and play my role, sometimes I think you mm. forget. But you best <laughs> remember. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Best. Alright. Best. Alright. Remember. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm Hi, thinking. I'm waiting, I can't sir. think of uh let's see. Oh my goodness, really. Really? Um, trying to think of the topics oh, of the day. Okay. Um, oh, yo, okay, so, today's news. <laughs> oh, good thing. Oh, bro, the fact that you're still getting dragged on TikTok. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, they are lighting fire to me on TikTok. So, for y'all that don't know, I posted a video the other day, I just started posting on TikTok, and I made a video um, in the parking lot um, where this guy parked like two inches off my bumper, so I went on a rant, and I posted a TikTok video. When I tell you the video, I mean, I don't know what the sun say, viral is not viral until you go like 100,000, but like, I had like... 30,000 views in like 24 hours and people were putting me on full blast like over 600 comments and only two or three of them was like yo bro I get it everybody else was like no you're the asshole and look at how you was parked and oh my god and like oh, I was it, it, wow like they calling me Karen and everything and telling me to change my you know change my diaper and you know, all sorts of ridiculous. They, 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 one yeah, guy said, yo, baby. like, yo, why didn't you hit him with your purse? Like, yo, they was wilding out. <laughs> that was my favorite <laughs> one. Oh, man, shout to all those people that even gave a damn. And that's funny because the ones that was like, who cares, right? And, and me and you both were commenting, like, you care. Because <laughs> you're going on the black. If you didn't care, you would have saw it and you would have kept it moving. But no, you stopped and you felt the need to chime in. That would be like, that'd be like me saying, I didn't care. And I posted a video. Obviously, I do care because it pissed me off that this guy back, this pickup truck, his hitch was literally two inches off my bumper. And I packed near the back of the parking lot away from everybody now granted i was parked on the line and that's what people are putting me on blast for but i did that on purpose to keep people away from me because those of you who care about your car know how disrespectful people could be out in the street people don't respect your car like you know you be in a city depending on what neighborhood you are people just sit on the hood of your car like it's all good um People, you go in a parking lot and you purposely park away from other people because, hey, you want to keep your stuff nice. And why would all the space in a parking lot where somebody come and park right next to you? Like, not even a gap between you and them. Come and park next to you in the back of the lot. That's like people just do that to tick you off. And what was I was saying, Nana? People don't respect your space. They don't respect your property. And that's my point. So to stop from fighting people all the time, what you gotta do is you gotta be um what's that um what's the word I'm looking for? Um you have to be um proactive, you know, instead of reactive, you know, you have to go and you know put yourself in a position where people 
aren't going to damage your property or do something that's going to tick you off. I thought I was doing that. And apparently this person, they found me, boy. And mm, mm, when I tell you two inches off the bumper, two inches off the bumper. Well, you know what? In hindsight, I think, you know, when I watched the video, I mean, you did go ham, right? You Look did, at this shit was, here, this motherfucker. Like, yo, I mean, you dig, I mean, yeah, you went, you went off. So maybe had you been like, yo, I can't, you know, just a little bit, like, like you went all the I way did. in, like... He took your winning lottery ticket. Well, you know what? And people were dissing my car. People were like, oh, like, yo, if he, if he put a dent in your minivan, Which you know, just go get totally another one. Crazy. Like, what? That's crazy. My $37,000 minivan? Like, everybody just got $37,000 to throw around and get another one, maybe? <laughs> Uh, no, I don't call a it a minivan, minivan but that's what some of the uh, some of the viewers called it. You know, a, a minivan, and I'm like, a one guy was uh, he I forgot the comment he made, but I was like, man, I'll dust you know whatever piece of shit is you driving, I'll dust that thing because they don't you know they they don't know what it is I'm driving. You know, I mean they they know they know it's a Durango, right? And they right. know that it usually doesn't have a good. I don't know if you want to call it reputation. A lot of people do look favorable upon, um, you know, Durangos and stuff. Like you didn't even look favorable upon a Durango. When I told you I was going to get one, you was like, Ugh, like, I don't know. But you understood why. I understand like, why. Because your standard story. Durango does look blood. You know, just like, uh. But mine is not just standard Durango. You know, it's an yeah, RT it's brass monkey. It's not just standard Durango. Right. So it, it sits yeah. lower, the rims and the wheels are wider. Uh, you know, it has the brass monkey package. You know, it has the, the the leather with the red stitching in it and everything. The RT. I mean, it's not just standard Durango. You know, it's just it's a difference between getting like a, a standard Charger or standard a standard Challenger. You may or may not like it, but then once you step up into the 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 three ninety twos and the, the Hellcats and stuff like that. The car starts to look different because it's decked out different. It sits lower, the wheels are different, stuff like that, and the car looks different. It's like, have you ever, for people who aren't really aren't into cars, right? You can look at, let's say, maybe a Honda Accord or a Honda Civic, and people that are into cars, and they might, you know, put different wheels on or something like that, and it looks like a total different car. It's like people. You can, you know, me and you, we're, we're both in the shoes, right, Nana? Right? You and I are both in the shoe, shoes. Yeah, for people. we're both into shoes. Well you, well, well, you know what? It's, it's not like you're in a shoe store and like, oh, bring not, me all the I shoes. Mean, not like that, but you can appreciate good footwear. You know? And that's me. I, I can appreciate good yeah. footwear, you know? And it's like, yo, a, a good, a great pair of shoes can make a shitty outfit look better, you know? And that's the same way it is in car. A shitty car, the whole appearance changes just because you put on different wheels. It might be ridiculous. People that got an $8,000 car put $20,000 rims on it. Now, that's that's ridiculous, but... <laughs> Listen, I want to put rims on my baby, and she just, you know... She but she's yours, her. and you yeah. love whatever you're driving. You have a love affair with your cars, mm -hmm. whatever car you're driving. You take care of it, and you love your vehicle. Mm -hmm. So for people who are into their cars, and I'm surprised I didn't come across any of those in this video... Um, this post people just don't get it like yo I love my car you call it what you want but I love it and I try to take care of it and I can't stand it when people like okay people will say but he didn't hit you right if I ran up to you and threw my fist in your face but just stopped short two inches of your nose and said ha but I didn't hit you would you feel good about that you know, or somebody goes barreling for your car and then they slam on the brakes and go, oh, but I didn't hit you. I was like, do you feel good about that? No. That's my point. Yes, but again, as we always say, you know, some, you, sometimes you can't make a point with special people. You know, people yeah. who don't get it. Um, because, you know, it's like, these are all people, and I would say predominantly. So if you say to someone, give me a piece of paper, and they gave you a piece of paper, but there's a little dot mm. on the paper. Everything else is white. You can use the paper. You can write a letter on the paper to someone, but you can only focus on the mm. dot. 
And that's what they did. They missed the whole white paper and that dot got on their nerve. Even though you said, um, I parked like this so that no one would next, next park next to me. I'm, you know, this is not how I generally park. This is why I park. You don't own oh, the parking lot. Are you the parking lot police? You don't know. Okay. Focusing, right. Focusing. And then somebody said, you're not in the back, all the way in the back. <laughs> okay, excuse me. I'm sorry. This is not a huge, giant, you know, this is not a, uh, oh, like the BJs and my, you know, my BJs, the parking lot is huge. Because it's, I mean, just, she, I mean, like, when you park in the back of BJ's and my, I yeah. mean, like, you almost need a tram to get to it. There's, you know, every, the park, but the parking lot, the BJ's parking lot in um, Green Acres is not that way. But it's the back of the parking lot. It doesn't mean it's not the back right. of the parking lot because I didn't have to trek three days. So, again, they focused on the dot on the page <laughs> and was going to make you focus on the page except the one guy, the one who was like, oh, damn, my. nobody took the other side. You know, somebody, you know, he was just trying to make us laugh, you know, making fun of himself. It's something to do. But what really pissed me off, and you said it's because of how I feel about you, which I don't disagree mm. with it, but it's more because I hate bullies, mm. or maybe it's tied because I hate bullies, is the um, the people who are like, you know, the, the who care people or the really, really negative yeah. people. And it's like, no, why are y'all so miserable? Why? Why are y'all so miserable? Like, I'm sorry your cat died. I'm sorry your dog got hit by a car. I mean, what is it, pumpkin? Just tell me what, you need a hug. You need somebody to rub your back and yeah. say it's okay. What? I tell you what, man, I, I get it. Like, like for, um, kids that are um you know that feel like you know they you know that get picked on all the time and the cyber bullying and stuff like that and if that's what it's like for people like lizzo and, and people that get targeted like that people who really i guess like uh buy into that type of stuff and let it affect their emotional well-being and stuff like that it's kind of crazy and I, and I witnessed it firsthand i could see how that would happen if you're of, of uh you know uh, for lack of putting it a better way, I'll say weak. If you got a weak constitution and can't handle that sort of thing, and somebody said, oh my God, the world is mad at me, and why are they saying these things about me, and oh my God, and if, you, if you're that type of person, something like that would be, would, be, would be devastating if you were that type of person. I made a post and the world hates me, oh my God. Listen. Listen, and I get it, but I'm t I'm telling you right now, I I don't know. You know, I was thinking about that because we talk, you know, yeah. here, and we know that people are gonna have opinions or whatever. And I don't know, I don't know, because and I don't mind. I, I'm like, if you ha if you if you don't agree with what, with what we're saying, you don't have to. We're not here to say that you need to agree with us. We're not here to say that you need to get on board with what we're saying. We are sharing our opinions right. on whatever the topic is. With that said, there's no need, you know, only people who are miserable are disrespectful. Cause it's basically like, it's just like Lizzo. And I said to you, how dare you not feel, I mean, how dare you be fat and overweight and not feel as bad as society says you right. should feel you, about you yourself. You're supposed to be miserable. How dare you? And ready to jump off the roof because you're fat. Listen. Listen, let me tell you something. Like my daughter at, I don't know, eight, nine years old, and I used to be 400 pounds, said to me back then, <laughs> you've never met a mirror you didn't like. Ah, uh, no, you're absolutely right. You're... No. You're so vain. No, I'm not gonna feel bad about me because <laughs> you probably think this song is should. about you. You're so vain, so vain. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I remember I was dating this guy, and he was like, um, "I was like, I hope you're not like obsessed with big girls because you know I'm I'm really, you know, um, 
working to lose weight. And he was like, as long as you don't become Whoa, defeated, shit, I was like, oh, obviously you have to pay attention. <laughs> you to back this up now. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm already conceded, baby. The weight loss is not going to make it any better. It ain't going to make it no worse either. I mean, it might make it better because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm confident in the skin I'm in. Um, so he was like, okay, but no, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, that, that's the problem. So to me, only miserable, miserable people come back with this, you know, people who... Um, whose parents said horribly negative things to them or they've been surrounded by negative because if you haven't been surrounded by that there's no reason to you know you're you know you're a horrible whiner Karen Ken uh, yeah, dickhead well, yeah, because hey, you posted hey, this video damn. Uh, I loved the 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 awe baby you know, yeah they like the people I actually gave and hearts and I, and I gave whole, thumbs up and likes oh. to people that were uh, taking their shot at me but you could tell where they was like, yeah, okay, you know, like, uh, like, oh, boo-hoo, here's a napkin. You're like, oh, shit, like, okay, you know, and things like that. And it's like, you know, and like I said, I love the comment about, <laughs> yo, hit him with your purse and stuff like that. that. That shit was cool, you know. It was funny as hell to me. Yeah. Um, but you could feel some people were seething, like, you know. And I, maybe maybe that's how I came off, too, because I guess in my video, mm -hmm. and if you, if you guys want to see the video, it's like, go to TikTok. And it's under that uh it's under the tag con rock hard <laughs> c-o-n space r-o-c-k space h-a-r-d if you want to see the video um i guess the thumbnail it starts with this is some bullshit like in a red box or white letters to help you locate the video but um I, I, to some people i might have came off like i was seething and i ain't gonna front i was tight I was tight. I, I mean, it, I, I didn't make that to make people laugh. I made that because I was like, yo, this is crazy. Be you know, at, at the end of the day, I just wanted to illustrate how people don't respect other people's property. You know, that's what I wanted to illustrate. And that's what I was annoyed about. You know, people keyed on, oh, but you're part crooked. You know, people who are not, who don't care about their cars or not car guys and gals. Yeah, they don't get the park in the back of the parking lot and, and take up two spaces. They they don't they don't get that. You know, to them that's like, oh, that's that's self to me that's selfish if you park right in front of the store door the store's doors and you go into the handicap section and you take up four spaces so your car doesn't get damaged. Yeah, you're a dick. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna do that, um and I would never do like a safe it's Christmas time, the parking lot is full. Yo, you take a space because you know the parking lot is full and it's probably going to get more full while you're in the store or whatever. So decency says, obviously you can see all the spaces are being taken. You're not going to take two. And I wouldn't do that. I would roll the dice and park my car normally in that situation. But if there's, if it's a day, like today, and it's just a normal day and, you know, and people are wherever to park a lot. And then you see there's like 50 parking spaces near the back of the lot and that's where you go and you take up two lines just to let other people know because even if you don't know you figure oh you would say to yourself oh this guy's an idiot he doesn't know how to park i can't park between the lines and park right next to him so you're forced to go park between the lines you know a space away from me you know that that should be obvious you might think I'm a dick, but hey, I'm in the back of the lot. And you chose to come back here too. And obviously you didn't think, well, you should move the hell out. Didn't you, didn't you have to crawl in your car Listen. through the drop the passenger side door because somebody parked so close to you, you couldn't even <clears throat> open the door to get in your own damn car? Yo, I was so mad. I was <laughs> and I had a dress. It was a Sunday. I came from church with my mom and my daughter and we came we just uh -huh. ran into the supermarket and I was parked. Okay. Yeah. And you know how like it has lanes, it's like a row. And I was the the next to I was I was like probably five mm. lanes over from the front of the door in the back mm. of the lot. And this idiot in this beat up POS comes and parks next to me. And I'm saying to myself, nobody could have gotten out of that car on the passenger side because I could not open my door. So of course I had to, and, and I was mm -hmm. driving my um, Maxima at the time. I got in and it was not as flexible as my car now. And I was bigger, so 
mm. I had to mm. lift up my dress, mm. bend over, but I mean, it was, I was, by the way, I was so mad by the time I got in that car. <laughs> All I could do, if, if, if I had a, a Sharpie or a, 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 whatever I would have had, I, but, but the crazy thing is, whatever I would have did to that car, they wouldn't have noticed yeah, because it was might have been an improvement. Anyway. Nobody would have noticed, okay? But might have been, might have been. But I was so angry. Um, and, and here's the thing: in that same parking lot, and this is a true story. Mm-hmm. I had, I literally had my car for two months. It was a early, early in the morning. The store had just opened. I parked maybe there's 10 cars in the whole lot i parked in the so there's a row and maybe there's like 20 right. 30 you know cars that can park in a row i parked at the the last the absolute last spot in the row away from the door now it's early in the morning i could have parked closer but i didn't i wanted to park far i go in i'm in the store maybe 10 minutes I come back and I can see a dent in my car as I'm walking up to it. I didn't have the car up. I was so mad if whoever was standing there would have been standing there. I swear, I, I don't know what I would have done. But I was, I stood in that parking lot and yelled and cussed and I said, whoever did this is a piece of shit and you don't have, I mean, you can't have shit in this world without people trying to, your hard work, I'm slaving like a, you know, uh, the rent is due tomorrow, and these mother effers are scratching up my car. Yep. The first knew anything I ever bought is brand new. I was so mad. That dent is still in my car. Now, in hindsight, right, you look at the dent, and, it, and it's a little yeah. dent because it's still in the car. I'm like, it's not it, the point. But I could see it. And that's not the point. Nobody wants this shit messed up. And then, you know, you know, you know. I think the day that I called you, because I was about to run in traffic, when I came out of this same shop right, okay, this same shop right, and couldn't function because of what I came out to. Do you remember that? Did I called you. I told you. Mm-mm. When some jackrabbit, oh, and I, some jackrabbit. Yeah, no, no. Wow. Can you yep. see it? And that's exactly okay. what I tried to then avoid by parking the way I did. Yes. Okay. Yep. And, and yep. drove off like nothing. Like nothing. Mm. Well, I came out of shop right and saw that. <laughs> I almost went down to my knees. You think you're lying? Oh, like, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, my baby, my oh, baby. baby. I'm sorry. I went in and look out. Like I think, when did I? I took her to the shop that day. Oh, I took her to the shop the next course, day. But I course. couldn't sleep with this dent in my car. Mm-hmm. Seventeen hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Yep. But it wasn't even my just because I parked in the lot. And you, oh, yeah. I mean, you did, to, whoever you, did you that, that regardless you, I mean, of how, what they was doing, control. they knew they hit your car. That that made a noise. And their car probably moved like buckle up. Oh shit! Like, what the hell was that? You know. Yeah. Assuming they were backing up. Yo, what was that? Yo, seventeen hundred. Yeah. yeah. Seventeen. So you correct me if I'm wrong. That probably looked like somebody was trying to get cute and, and back the car up into the spot next to you and, and, and went into your car, right? Listen, I don't know what they do. So now when I park, and, and even then, that day that mm. I park. I always park on an end spot where there's not like where there's like you know grass or a curb i always park on on those spots even if i have to park far away and then i park close to the curb so that the line you know like you got like if the person parks next to me and they park in their line they're fine I've had people park in my parking space with me right. after I was there first because I was so far over. Mm. That's not what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to park in the line. 
not because I gave extra room. You thought it was okay to share my pockets? <laughs> Are you sharing the cost of my groceries? Sorry. Listen, you know, don't get me started on this because I just, I, I have no, no, no patience for the disrespect well, we that people already, put on um, other people. We don't already got in that, but we, we don't already start it, but you know what, we're going to stop it because it's like we had, what, five, 59 minutes for 47 seconds. So, Nana, uh, thank you for uh, having this conversation with me today. Thank you, Nana. Alright. Alright, talk to you later You're welcome, now. Grandpa. You're welcome, Omen. Okay, I'll just stop the recording. You ain't hanging up the phone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. What the heck? Uh